The West African green mamba has a highly toxic venom and a potentially fatal bite. However, it is usually timid and spends most of its time in the treetops. It could reach lengths up to almost six feet and its diet consists of birds and lizards. The venom from a McGregor's pit viper is hemotoxic, which paralyzes the circulatory system and organs of the victim. This snake can come in a variety of colors from bright yellow to silver to brown. In the wild, its diet consists of small birds, mammals, and lizards. This is a baby common marmoset, one of the smallest primates in the world. This species is classified as a New World monkey, native to the rainforest of South America. Although they are extremely adorable, they are not recommended as pets for many reasons, one of which is their specialized diet. Tree sap is their favorite food and they use their specialized teeth to extract it. They also enjoy fruits and prey on insects and small lizards. The biggest threats to this species are habitat loss and capture for the pet trade, but thankfully the United States has made it illegal to import these monkeys. If your frog looks like this, he needs to see a vet. This condition is called dropsy, otherwise known as edema, ascites, or bloat. It can be caused by many different things, including cardiac disease, kidney disease, or improper water conditions. In this case, we were able to drain the fluid, but unfortunately, it can be fatal. Now I know what you're thinking. What is this crazy thing I'm holding? This is a millipede, one of my favorite insect pets. Unlike centipedes that have a venomous bite, these millipedes are harmless. They help keep the environment clean by eating dead and decaying plant material. We found a golden orb weaver spider in our backyard and decided to feed it. At first we weren't sure what she'd do, but then she sprang into action, making her cocoon of silk. These garden spiders may look scary, but they're actually not dangerous to humans. They eat aphids, flies, wasps, mosquitoes, and other harmful bugs, so it's definitely good to have them around. You can look for the classic zigzag on their webs called a stable amentum. This is the critically endangered Kaiser Newt. They're native to a few mountain streams in western Iran. Unfortunately, it's thought that there's less than a thousand mature individuals in the wild. With proper care, hopefully we can save the species. What I have here is a beautiful tomato hornworm. Although many gardeners fear them as pests, many reptile keepers use them to supplement their pet's diet because they are packed with calories and nutrients. If you need to put weight on your reptile, tomato hornworms are a great addition to their diet. They have a good amount of moisture, so they're great for helping prevent dehydration and no exoskeleton, which means they are more easily digested. It's important to keep in mind that hornworms should not become the sole source of any diet, just in addition to improve variety. This is a Lake Titicaca frog, and although its name may sound funny, it's no laughing matter that these frogs are critically endangered. Unfortunately, this species has been facing decline due to pollution and poaching of the frogs to make frog juice, which is sold illegally. Locals falsely believe it has medical properties as an aphrodisiac. Although some call this species a hellbender, it's actually a harmless aquatic salamander. They're near threatened, but you can find them in the eastern and central United States. An adult can weigh up to five and a half pounds, making them the largest amphibian in North America. They usually reach maturity around five years of age, but they can live up to 30 years in captivity. Locals have come up with interesting nicknames such as snot otter, lasagna lizard, and devil dog. Which one's your favorite? Some scientists have speculated that African penguins may go extinct within our lifetime. The most recent census stated that only 13,000 breeding pairs remain, with extinction expected within the next decade due to habitat loss, destruction of nests, overfishing, disasters such as oil spills, pollution, and climate change. Thankfully, there are zoos like the Dallas Zoo that are working closely with this critically endangered species to help turn things around. I got to see these giant otters during my veterinary externship at the Dallas World Aquarium. They are the largest of the 13 otter species and eat a diet consisting mostly of fish. An interesting fact is that giant otters are monogamous, with pairs staying together for life. They make their homes in large, slow-moving rivers in South America. Unfortunately, they're listed as endangered, but conservation efforts are currently underway. I can't imagine a world without this cute and playful weasel. This is a male Santa Isabel poison dart frog carrying his babies on his back. The female usually lays her eggs on a plant, and when they hatch, the father will carry them and transport them to a body of water. If you look closely, you can see the tiny little tadpoles twitching on his back. Who knew poison dart frogs could be such attentive fathers? The shoebill stork has been nicknamed the real-life hippogriff due to its bowing behavior. Although bowing is a nest greeting behavior in the wild, many in captivity are known to bow to their guests. Although it has stork in its name, this bird is actually more closely related to pelicans and is an avid hunter, eating fish, frogs, and even snakes. They are native to the dense freshwater marshes of Africa. 
and are considered to be one of the five most desirable birds in Africa by bird watchers. This is by far my favorite bird at the Dallas World Aquarium where I did my veterinary externship. This is a binturong, also known as a bear cat. Some like to say it has a face like a cat, a body like a bear, and a tail like a monkey. They're native to the dense tropical forests of Southeast Asia and are currently classified as vulnerable, with populations declining. Their biggest threats are habitat destruction, hunting, and the wildlife trade. They're classified as omnivores and eat everything from fish, small mammals, invertebrates, plants, and fruit. A very unusual fact about them is that their scent glands give off a smell of buttered popcorn. Manatees, sometimes known as sea cows, are large herbivorous marine mammals. Unfortunately, their slow-moving and curious nature has led to violent collisions with boat propellers, which is the leading cause of death in addition to habitat destruction. Looking at a bat wing up close may surprise you. Their wings are made up of a thin membrane of skin stretched between bones that are equivalent to our fingers. Their thumb extends out of the wing like a small claw, which helps them climb up trees. You can see very tiny blood vessels and nerves running through this membrane, as well as muscle striations that allow for extremely delicate changes in position when flying. Things you need to know about lizard ears. There's no external ear, so you can see directly inside. What's interesting is that the tympanic membrane is covered with transparent skin that also comes off when shedding. Next time your lizard sheds, let me know if you can find it. I was lucky enough to see these Australian spotted jellyfish at the Vancouver Aquarium. They have only a mild venom and are not considered a threat to humans. They have a mild or non-noticeable sting, which can be cured with dilute acids such as white or cider vinegar. Since their venom is not potent enough to kill their prey, they have adapted to being filter feeders. Their main food source is zooplankton. These hedgehog babies were just born today. Their eyes will open in about two weeks and they'll be weaned by around three to four weeks. When they're first born, their spines are actually quite soft, but pretty soon they'll harden and then they'll be replaced by adult ones. A couple months ago, we got our poison dart frog tadpoles. In just a few weeks, they started to sprout their legs. We were so excited. In captivity, they're not poisonous because they have a different diet than they would in the wild. These are called rubber ducky isopods, but as you can see, they're basically a fancy species of roly-poly. Due to their rarity and slow growth rate, you can often find them being sold online for over $100 for just a small colony of five or six. They are native to Thailand and prefer high humidity and lots of soil to burrow in. Here you can see our colony chowing down on some fish food, their favorite snack. The striped shrimp fish or razor fish is a distant relative of the pipe fish and seahorses. It has a slender, silver, flattened body with a dark longitudinal line that runs the entire length of the body, even going through the eyes. It has a long, slender snout and a long, sharp dorsal spine. This fish has a unique method of swimming. It swims in synchronized schools in a vertical position, basically upside down, with the snout pointing straight down. It does this to hide in the branches of coral or the spines of sea urchins. These are one of my favorite fish at the Dallas World Aquarium. This is a critically endangered Pan's box turtle. They're native to China and often hunted for their meat and eggs. Luckily, I got to meet these guys at the Dallas Zoo where conservation efforts are underway. Did you know that it's a myth that chameleons change color to blend in with their environment? In reality, they change due to external factors such as temperature and time of day and internal factors such as their health and communication. The species you see here is a four-horned chameleon, but only the males have horns. These are our Dendrobates leucomella poison dart frogs, otherwise known as the yellow-banded poison dart frog. In captivity, however, they are not poisonous. This is because they get their poison from the bugs they eat in the wild, and in captivity, we feed them harmless fruit flies. Listen up if you want to hear what they sound like. Fun facts about snake tongues. Snakes smell using the tip of their tongues, and because it's forked, they're able to tell which direction the smell is coming from. With each flick of their tongue, they're smelling for prey, following a trail, or even looking for a mate. It's not just for snakes, though. Even some lizards have evolved a forked tongue. The Jacobson organ, which is at the roof of the snake's mouth, picks up these signals and transmits them to the brain. Be sure to tag a snake lover or snake hater in the comments. Have you ever wondered what a scaleless snake's skin looks like when it sheds? Similar to other snakes, you can see the eye caps when they shed, but you don't see the typical scale pattern on the backs. Be sure to follow for more veterinary and animal facts.